Hello from LPL Financial. Welcome to The Talking Point. I'm your host, Quincy Crosby. Good morning, everyone. This is Quincy Crosby. Thank you for joining me on The Talking Point. I appreciate it. It is Monday morning. It is September 19th, and we're looking at a negative opening to the market. Also, I'm looking at some of the yields on the Treasury market as I do this call. Uh, We are looking at the 10-year moving to 3.5. We have not seen that since 2011. And the two-year moving to 3.9. It had touched 3.9 on Friday, but it had pulled back before the uh, Treasury market closed. And that we have not seen since 2007. This is important, especially when we look at the two-year. And the reason for that, it is most vulnerable to the Federal Reserve's moves and projected moves uh, in the market. Now, needless to say, we are going to have a Fed meeting this week, and it is an extremely important meeting. The Fed Funds futures market is looking at 75 basis points. I do want to report that it had pulled back from a 1% or 100 basis points uh, that the market had thought we would move to last week after the consumer price index came out. Let's go back to last week for one minute, if we may. The consumer price index showed that at the headline, not the core, but the headline, which is food and energy. Yes, energy pulled back, but food prices continue to climb. Also, in the core, what the Fed is looking at is an entrenched reading. By entrenched, it means it is stubborn. That's really what it means. It's stubborn. And that has to do with rents. Rents is represent one-third of the core CPI. And why would that be? It's because the average American is paying rent, right, is paying rent. And for the average American, it is an important budget allocation. Also, when you take a look at the fact that many people have mortgages that are not fixed, and so what you're probably going to start seeing is that those mortgage payments are going higher because rates are moving higher. They're actually just an asterisk here. Uh, There has been a view that if folks have money in their savings accounts, they may just try to pay off their mortgages because they know that the uh, rates are going to go up if they do not have a fixed uh, mortgage. So the Fed looked at this. They also looked at Just to give you another example of what has been climbing higher, medical services climbing higher. And they're seeing something that is almost textbook, that when the Fed begins to raise rates, the first areas that move are the mortgages, and then you start to see the credit card rates move higher. But to get into the nooks and crannies of the economy, it takes a while. There's a lagged effect. Just as when the Fed starts lowering rates, it takes a while before we start to feel it throughout the economy. And the Fed wants to break that cycle, and especially in terms of rents. So the good news, and I do want to point out there is good news from last week. One is that the average American consumer does not see inflation climbing higher over the next five years. That is good news, because if that were to continue, we did see one move higher uh, a couple of months ago, and then it started a pullback. It's good news, because once the average consumer sees inflation climbing higher for a long period of time. You have a psychology of higher inflation, and that is really difficult to break. Similarly, just say on the other side of the equation, when you start to see rates falling and falling, that's a deflationary mindset, and that is also difficult for uh, for the uh, Fed. Now, Getting back to last week, the National Association for Independent Businesses came out with their report. This is the small business owner, and I pay very close attention to what they have to say. They are the backbone of this country. They are the backbone for hiring. And what they're focused on, by the way, is input cost. What do they have to shell out before they can actually walk away with, with an income, right, for, the, for themselves? And also, they are the ones that look at sales. Uh, You know, what are their sales projections? Because if they see it moving higher, uh, they want to hire people. One of the things that came out of the report from last week, which was, by the way, a report looking at August inflation, 
was that overall they saw inflation moderating, and that was good news. But it was not enough to offset where the equity market was headed. And that came on Friday, as everyone knows, with FedEx. FedEx is considered what we call a bellwether company, a barometer for other companies and for for, uh, taking a look at the economy and the global economy. And basically, uh, there were concerns about FedEx's specific issues. By the way, FedEx will report this week. And there are specific issues. You could say, hey, this had more to do with FedEx itself than really taking a look at the overall economy. However, that message that we are headed into a deep recession was taken very badly by the market. And you saw what happened. We broke 3,900 on the S&P 500. I want to mention why this is important. We have seen 3,900 holding up. On the days where we have seen a sell-off over the last number of weeks, we somehow miraculously closed on the S&P 500, even if it was just a tad above 3,900. But we broke that, and we came down below that. Now, what's going to happen is the market has to find a new base, an area where we can have a kind of new 3,900, if you will, whether it is somewhere over 3,700, whether it's we have to go to 3,500, we have to see. And it's going to depend on what the Fed has to tell us. It's going to depend on what companies tell us. And that's going to be important over the next number of weeks. So this is important for the market. September is a difficult month in the best of times. But now we are looking at a difficult period where the Fed determined to fight inflation, regardless of what it does to the labor market and to the overall economy. I also want to add from last week, and I do mention this from time to time, the Philadelphia Fed survey on manufacturing, which has a positive correlation with the rest of the country, You notice we go to Philadelphia, then we will have Kansas, we will have Virginia, uh, the Richmond Fed, all around the country. It was negative, Uh, negative, 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 not good. Now, you could say, Quincy, well, manufacturing is only, you know, 8 to 9 percent of the GDP. Uh, I'll tell you, it is an important part of our economy, especially when we're fighting to see if the third quarter can end in the green Right now, the third quarter that we're in is perilously close to coming in negatively when all is said and done. So anything that can help this economy stay in the green for the third quarter would be a net positive for the outlook for the market. Now, I do want to say on the S&P 500, when we come into this week, we're looking at a more favorably priced market. We are looking at forward earnings right now, the S&P trading at 16.4 times forward earnings, meaning over the next year and or 12 months. This is versus 16.8 times, which was just a couple of weeks ago. And over the five-year period, 18.6 times and the 10-year, 17 times forward earnings. So we're coming in with the market more attractively valued. And that's, a, that's good news because one of the things the market does, it tries to find an equilibrium. It's like the GPS in our car, recalibrating, taking all of the headwinds and all of it ultimately will be the earnings reports as well and coming up with a valuation that is commensurate with the headwinds, the earnings, the Fed's moves. So I think it is good news that we're coming into this week with an S&P 500 at a more attractive level. This week, obviously, we have a number of important data releases. Uh, Much of it has to do with the um, the, um, housing market. One data release after another. Today, Monday, it'll be the National Association of Home Builders a report, but we have a string of reports with housing. Obviously, that's important, and the market is going to pay attention to all of that, but we know that the housing market is tightening. But also what we have in, in the market this week, we have a number of earnings reports that will not be part of the earnings 
that we typically look at when we begin the, I call it the official, unofficial opening of the earnings season for the third quarter earnings, where we start with the banks. But we are going to have the um, reports on a number of housing uh, related companies, Lenar, KB, and we'll hear what they have to say. I don't think it's going to be good, but we want to see, are they seeing any signs that invest, uh, buyers are coming in? Are they looking? Are they saying that they'll be back? I don't think it's going to be a great story right now, but nonetheless, we have to hear from it. FedEx will come in also this week their, with their official earnings. And we will also have Costco this week, which I think is important considering how important it is to the average U.S. consumer. We want to hear what they have to say. But overall, it is about the Fed this week. So what do we expect? 75 basis points right now is the Fed Funds Futures Market telling us. The next Fed meeting will be November 2nd. And again, the Fed Funds Futures Market right now <clears throat> is also predicting we will see 75 basis points. But this meeting also has the so-called dot plot. It's not something that has a great relationship with what actually happens, but the market does respond to it. It will be where these Federal Reserve officials see rates over the next year. And, and you know, then you get a median on it. But nonetheless, we want to see what they do have to say. I think the most important part of this Fed meeting will be what Chairman Powell has to say at the press conference. We want to see whether or not he alludes to any scenario, because remember, he's answering questions, and whether, whether or not the Fed would stop, whether or not the Fed would pause. Because keep in mind, this month, the Fed is gearing up for winding down its nearly $9 trillion balance sheet. And the Fed is going into higher gear with quantitative tightening. So you know what quantitative easing is. It's the one where we say, don't fight the Fed. They're pushing liquidity into the market. Now they are draining liquidity from the market. And it will be about $95 billion worth of treasuries and also mortgage-backed securities <clears throat> that are coming off the balance sheet. We know that when the Fed did this, before, uh, back in 2018, and uh, well, basically 2018, we saw problems with the repo market, the overnight market. We're going to ask, I'm sure someone is going to ask Chairman Powell, what, what are you prepared to do if it happens again? And I say this because there is liquidity draining out of the Treasury market, and we want to hear what he has to say about that. And as I said, I do believe that there will be reporters asking him, what is the Fed doing? How are they monitoring that? How are they making certain that we don't have a similar problem with the overnight market, the repo market? So all these questions, now we want to see how he answers. Statistically, the market does very well on the Fed day, right? It does very well. The market goes up. Well, we want to see if that happens this time. If it doesn't, it will be breaking a cycle of positive closes on the S&P 500 when the Fed has their uh, rate hike day and press conference. Now, I do want to also mention that many of the technical analysts who follow the market and follow the history of the market suggest we may have to find a base down in the 3,600 level for the S&P 500. And there are those who are saying, no, we may have to go lower to maybe 3,500. So remember, from 3,900 all the way down there to find that base. But September is turning out to be, I'll tell you for the record book, even worse than it typically is supposed to be. It's a really dangerous month. October is known, I'm just going to say this, it's not, uh, you know, written in, 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 in stone, but it's known as the bear killer. In other words, October is known, it could be really nasty, but it's known as the bear killer. In other words, it kills the bear. So we'll see if that actually happens. And if it does, it'll be very good news. Because typically, going into the end of October, and into the, um, the election, whether it is the midterm election, 
or it is the presidential election, the market comes out strong, especially after deep sell-offs. So we'll be looking for that. But keep that in mind, the, the kind of the uh, notion that October could be what's called the, the uh, bear killer. Also, I've been paying attention to the, um, the sectors. It's interesting that the transports, besides FedEx, have been struggling and they have been struggling. I, I follow the transports. After all, they are the ones that deliver the goods. And if there aren't enough goods, there isn't enough in the transports to deliver. But I'm also looking at consumer discretionary. I have noticed that consumer discretionary has gotten a bid. When I say a bid, by the way, I mean interest, right? I, I, investor or trader interest. That's good news. It's been fleeting. It, it's been a flirtation with consumer discretionary, but it's good to see because when you come out of a bear market, you want to see the consumer discretionary take over from consumer staples. Also, I have noticed that on a couple of days now where the financials have done well. And this is important because you may say to me, Quincy, why wouldn't they do well when the 10-year treasury yield is up? Don't they do well with the net interest margin being actually very attractive for insurance companies and banks? Yes, the answer is yes. However, if the market suspects that a recession is coming or that loans are going to not be paid, by the way, the market does not react kindly to those higher yields. And yet, I have seen the financials, along with consumer discretionary, show some interest. It's been fleeting, but I was happy to see it uh, at the close of a couple of the trading sessions. We will see over the next number of weeks if we actually see a move towards that, which, remember, that would be the market telling us that we're pulling out of the bear, even obviously at a lower level for the S&P 500. Also in this market, we're waiting to see whether or not we hear other revisions. The way FedEx came out last Friday, even though their earnings, the official earnings is this week. Remember, they work on a different calendar, on an annual calendar. But whether or not we hear any positive surprises where companies come in and say, hey, you know, it looks actually pretty good. It, it looks like we may actually meet our goals for the year. Or is it going to be an abundance of negative surprises? leading up to the official, non-official of, of when the banks start uh, reporting. This is going to be important, very important for the market. So it's going to be a very interesting week. We'll be back next week. And please don't hesitate to call. Hang in there. Remember, we get through this, we sell off, and then we probably, statistically, I say probably, statistically, come to a point in the middle to end of October, where the market is able at a lower level to start rebounding. Thank you so much. Have a good week. This material was prepared by LPL Financial. It's for general information only and is not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. There is no assurance that the views or strategies discussed are suitable for all investors or will yield positive outcomes. Investing involves risks, including possible loss of principal. Any economic forecast set forth in the podcast may not develop as predicted and are subject to change. References to markets, asset classes, and sectors are generally regarding the corresponding market index. All indexes are unmanaged and cannot be invested into directly. Index performance is not indicative of the performance of any investment and do not reflect fees, expenses, or sales charges. All performance reference is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All information referenced in the podcast is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor and broker dealer, member FINRA and SIPC. Insurance products are offered through LPL or its licensed affiliates. To the extent you are receiving investment advice from a separately registered independent investment advisor that is not an LPL affiliate, please note LPL makes no representation with respect to such entity. If your financial professional is located at a bank or credit union, please note 
note that the bank or credit union is not registered as a broker dealer or investment advisor. Registered representatives of the LPL may also be employees of the bank or credit union. These products and services are being offered through LPL or its affiliates, which are separate entities from and not affiliates of the bank or credit union. Securities and insurance offered through LPL or its affiliates are not insured by the FDIC or NCUAA or any other government agency, not bank or credit union guaranteed, not bank or credit union deposits or obligations, and may lose value. 